you committed the ultimate act of betrayal, leaving your baby terrified, alone, unprotected, to suffer what I heard was the most gruesome death imaginable. An Ohio mother will spend the rest of her life in prison for leaving her toddler home alone for more than a week where she starved to death while her mom jetted off on vacation. Prosecutors say 32-year-old Crystal Candelario left her 16-month-old daughter Jalen alone and unattended at her home beginning on June 6 of 2023. Candelario didn't return home until 10 days later on the 16th, and upon returning home, she made the tragic discovery. Her daughter was found unresponsive in what investigators described as a filthy playpen. She had been extremely dehydrated and the young toddler was pronounced dead at the scene. According to the medical examiner, Jalen's body was extremely emaciated. She weighed less than 14 pounds at the time of her death. Investigators say Candelario left her daughter alone while she vacationed in Detroit and Puerto Rico. She was arrested and booked a day after returning home and discovering her daughter's body. In February of 2024, Candelario pleaded guilty to charges including aggravated murder and endangering children. During Candelario's sentencing, the prosecution said investigators combed through more than 600 hours of ring camera footage, which actually showed Candelario left her daughter alone for two days before she jetted off on her vacation. If, in fact, we would have gone to trial, the evidence was going to show that Crystal Candelaria left the state of Ohio on 6-4, 2023. She leaves because there is a receipt that's found in her car that she is in Taylor, Michigan. Unbeknownst to Ms. Candelario, her neighbors had ring doorbell and the Cleveland Police Department homicide unit has gone through 648 hours and videos of the ring doorbell which you're going to see in this presentation. With regards to Ms. Candelaria, she returns to Cuyahoga County on 6-6 at 7.41 a.m. So at this particular point, we have reason to believe that this child was left alone for two days now, and she returns on 6-6, 2023. Prosecutors say after returning on June 6 of 2023, ring camera footage captures Candelario again leaving Cuyahoga County, Ohio, where police cameras later captured her movements in Detroit, Michigan. Through the search warrants, we were able to retrieve her spirit airline tickets that showed her departure and her return from Puerto Rico. She was gone from 6-8 to 6-11. And it's interesting, Your Honor, because in the defense memorandum, it says that her abrupt stopping of medications played a significant role in her ability to function as a parent and make sound decisions. So when we look at these are items from her phone, her actions indicate to us that she is in Puerto Rico having a good time with friends and that there is not a care in the world about the 16 month old that was left alone in the pack and play. These pictures show somebody who is showing some discretion and judgment because she's having a good time. Meanwhile, this child is in a pack and play. The prosecutor said during Candelario's vacation, ring camera video captured the sounds of crying from her toddler while she was left unattended. When she returned on June 16th, prosecutors say upon discovering her daughter dead in the pack and play, Candelario redressed the young toddler before calling 911. Portions of that phone call were played before the judge in court where Candelario can be heard screaming for help. Okay, 
The state says despite Candelario's emotional phone call to 911, the next day she went back to Detroit to visit one of the men she had been dating. During her interview with investigators, Candelario claimed she had been home all week and her daughter hadn't been eating well for the past few days. She said she woke up that morning and found Jalen unresponsive. So that was just Monday and Tuesday of this week she was throwing up. Yes. And then how was she Wednesday and Thursday? She was with no uh, with no food, just with a meal because uh, she was refusing. Maybe it's because she gave it one minute two days, uh, you know, before. Yeah. So that's why I, what, what? I was scary because I say, oh my God, let me go to the hospital because she doesn't eat anything. I, I, she was lose tiny, you know, her yeah. weight. I lose, you know, her weight. But right now in this morning when I wake up, she was asleep. She sleep every day 12 hours. Okay. She sleep like at 9 8 p.m. Okay. through 9 or 10 a.m. Okay. 12 hours. So in this morning I was sleeping too. I never wake up. She was up. What, what happened? How, what was going on last night? Last night she was crying a lot. And I see one moment when I was a, take a shower, me, and she was uh, she was screaming like, ah, I don't know, probably she get in pain. Okay. Maybe. About what time was that last night? Uh, maybe at 7 or 8 p.m. Okay. So she was screaming like a, you know, probably with, for pain or something like that. Um, in this morning when I wake up, you know, I t I took her in the morning for up daily, wake up, da, 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 da. and she wake up, and, and when I see her, I see she looks like a really, really uh, dry, like a, como se dice, cuando una persona se, se chupa, o sea, se, kind of like, yeah. Prosecutors say Jalen died a horrible death, prompting them to bring in the medical examiner, Dr. Elizabeth Mooney, to explain to the judge the terrible and horrendous conditions Jalen suffered. Unfortunately, this is one of the most tragic and unfortunate cases I've had in my career thus far. So today I speak on behalf of her and her findings with the course of my examination. We received Jalen at the medical examiner's office from the scene of her residence, at which time she was clothed in non-soiled clothing, uh, indicating her body had likely been dressed prior to first responders' arrival, as they had mentioned before. So at autopsy, I examined uh, the body of a very emaciated female toddler. At this point, she weighed 13 pounds. Upon review of medical records, this indicated approximately a seven pound weight loss since her previous doctor's visit less than two months prior to that. The eyes were sunken and she had temporal wasting in her face. In addition to that, the skin showed markedly decreased turgor, meaning when I pinch the skin, it remains in that tented position, indicating severe dehydration. In addition, there was abundant fecal material, present cakes on the fingers, the fingernails, the hands, the feet, as well as the soles of the feet. The same material was found on her lips, which were very dry and flaking, as well as in her oral cavity, caked to her teeth. Dr. Mooney said Jalen's body fed upon itself, trying to get nutrients. Her kidneys failed, and based on the decomposition and state of her body, she had likely died two or three days before her mom returned and discovered her body. Jalen's cause of death was ultimately ruled as starvation and extreme dehydration due to pediatric neglect. The state said none of Jalen's family called their office to ask about the case. Instead, they were more concerned about Candelario. So law enforcement became the voice for the young toddler. Sergeant Teresa Gomez became emotional as she explained Jalen's young life was cut too short for no apparent reason. This tragedy should have never happened. I am Sergeant Gomez from the homicide unit. The entire homicide unit, Cleveland Homicide Initiative, and our partners from the FBI are here today in honor of baby J. Lee Candelario. When we were first notified of this horrific case, we were all heartbroken. But when we started digging deeper into the investigation, it was beyond horrific. It was revealed that the defendant, Crystal Candelario, left her own child alone for hours which led to days 
which led to weeks. This 16-month-old baby was left alone in a pack and play to fend for herself for 11 days with no food, maybe milk, the clothing she had on, and the diaper she was wearing. This baby loved her mother. She needed her mother, and her mother betrayed her. Later, when it came to the defense's turn to speak, Candelario's lawyer, Derek Smith, didn't condone her actions. Everything that I'm about to get into here today, and my client agrees with me, <laughs> is no justification for her actions. And what the prosecution said, actions matter. And these actions are narcissistic, selfish, abhorrent, absolutely worst parenting imaginable. She pled to aggravated murder. She pled to child endangering. So everything we're about to tell you is, is mitigation. The defense says Candelario was struggling with being a single mother of two. Fast forward to 2023, it's just overwhelming. She even tried to harm herself, took 20 Motrin, ended up in Metro. Um, in early February of 23, after spending just a few days in her room alone, her mother went to check on her, asked her what was going on. Her whole side of her body was numb. Didn't know what was going on. They took her to Hillcrest Hospital. She was admitted there. And they were doing some uh, evaluations for you know, her migraines. She was complaining about headaches and weakness, facial drooping, thought it was a possible stroke. They put her on IV Depakote, which is a anti-seizure, also used to treat manic disorder. And at the end of the day, after evaluations, she was clean, nothing wrong with her brain. They gave her oral Depakote and Effexor to antidepressants and sent her home. She was not very clear on what those were, but she was taking them supposedly as directed. And then she returned to Hillcrest Hospital again in March, and there was a note from the doctor saying that she should have had plenty of Effexor, but she's saying that she's, she's out and she needs more, and she's coming back with the same problems. So they have her evaluated again, and they were saying that her anxiety and her stress was the trigger for these physical manifestations to what was happening to her, for the loss of sensation in the side of her body, the numbness. And they prescribed her more Depakote, more Effexor, and also Adorax to help her sleep, because she wasn't sleeping. And this is in March of 2023. And I'll take the medications as prescribed. And then, Medications ran out. She wasn't feeling any better. They weren't working. She stopped. I'm not supposed to do that with these drugs, Your Honor. These are very serious mental health drugs. And you need to be tapered off of these medications, or there could be some side effects. Not only the side effects, but the actual underlying conditions that she may have had or been suffering from are also going unmedicated this time. Smith said the photos of Candelario on the beach didn't show the entire story, adding she was hiding her depression from herself and her family. He said there was no justification for Candelario's actions. She could have called authorities or done things differently. When you're in that state, when you're off medication, mismanaging your thoughts, you're not thinking clearly. Her body just, she had to get out and she was having fun. If she was okay, in her mind, Jaylene was okay. And of course, that was, that's not the case, but I will point to when she did finally get home and we heard that 911 call she she didn't want this to happen you could hear that screaming help me my daughter's dying yes because of your actions because of what your choices were and you took responsibility for that but that that call that that one tiny breach from whatever was going on in her head, that reality that her daughter was dying. She was calling for help. She didn't want that. The defense called Candelario's mother and father to speak before the judge, and despite the prosecution saying Jalen's extended family never followed up with the state about the case, Candelario's family, through an interpreter, said they were sorry for not seeing the signs their daughter was struggling on the inside, and they will never forget Jalen. No one ever imagined that this suffering would uh, culminate in a tragedy. Y hoy aquí quiero decirle a Jailin 
And, uh, here I'm que eres here. nuestro ángel, Jailin. I want to stay here before uh, uh, Jailin, our angel. Tu recuerdo vive en nosotros. That uh, your memory lives within us. Siempre te amaremos. We will always love you. Te acuné en mis brazos. I uh, held you in my arms. Tus abuelos nunca te olvidarán. Your uh, grandparents will never forget you. Perdóname, bebé. Uh, um, forgive me. Uh, uh, Por vivir la oscuridad del conocimiento. For uh, being in the dark. Candelario also addressed the court where she appeared visibly emotional. Through an interpreter, she said she was extremely hurt by everything that happened. I'm not trying to justify my actions. Pero nadie sabe cuánto yo estaba sufriendo. But nobody knew how much I was suffering. Y por lo que estaba pasando. And what I was going through. Todos los días le pido perdón a Dios y a mi hija, Jailin. Every day I ask forgiveness from God and from my daughter, Jailin. Soy una persona creyente de Dios. I'm a person who believes in God. Y reconozco hoy que todos y todas muchas ocasiones somos tentados por el enemigo. And I recognize uh, today that all, me, all of us uh, are sometimes uh, subject to the enemy. Candelario said not a day goes by that she doesn't think of her daughter and says she prays to be reunited with her surviving daughter one day. However, the judge didn't mince words saying Jalen died without the protection of her own mother, who chose to have fun over parenthood. You committed the ultimate act of betrayal, leaving your baby terrified, alone, unprotected, to suffer what I heard was the most gruesome death imaginable, with no food, no water, no protection, and lying in her own feces. Ms. Candelaria, you know the responsibility of parenthood. You have an, a child already. You raise another child. And I've witnessed here before me your parents who showed you love and respect and education. And they came here to help you, to advocate for you, more than what you've done for your own child. The evidence that I've witnessed here before this court shows that this time you simply chose not to be here because you wanted to have fun. You decided you needed a vacation. And what followed was absolute depravity. The judge said at any point Candelario could have called for help or had someone come over to watch Jalen, but she chose otherwise. Instead, I see photos of you on a beach while your child was eating her own feces in an attempt to survive. Photos mean something. And I'm well aware of mental health, but didn't look like you were too concerned about your child. The judge said just as Candelario left Jalen alone to die, he ordered she face a similar punishment of life in prison. The only difference will be that prison will at least feed you and give you liquids that you denied her. The judge said this is one of the most difficult cases to hear. Candelario's life sentence comes with no chance for parole. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.